help, and she did with the yearbook, and you know, we worked on a lot of things together, and it was just great to have someone like Sue come in and and do all those things, and, and she continued to do them um, selflessly and and with great honor, and she's taught that. You know, there are parents in this room who whose lives have been affected by her teaching. You, you know, your your children have. Um, excelled in science and math because of her teaching and I certainly know that her colleagues who are here representing her right now um, continue to be better people and better teachers because of her as well and um, I consider it a great <coughs> honor and tribute that, that so many of them came here to be here with her so um, as a friend I've added that she's not only a, a teacher and a student, and a colleague, and a companion, and a caregiver, but that um, she really made me work hard for my A in math. <laughs> um, when the state of Pennsylvania decided that uh, Mrs. Sippler, the art teacher, did not have enough college math credits to get uh, certified, um, I needed to take a certification exam in math, and a boy's Toma. Um, took me on as a student and tutored me and then I, I took a class at, at uh, Penn State and um, well she made me work really hard <laughs> really really hard but she made it enjoyable and she made it challenging and uh, she helped me earn my A and got me my certification and, and I will always be indebted to her for that and um, it's why I, I said to share my personal story here, and I won't tell you everything that went on in class, but um, it, I just know that if she did that for me, and it really, she, she did not do me any favor. But she um, must do the same for all of her students every day. And, and I just think that, um, as I said, you know, stand up kids. Stand up and show who you are, all of you who are respected, and parents in our <laughs> Thanks so many. <laughs> <laughs> and if I may say, and I did have a sign on the table, but the flowers in the middle of your table are not giveaways. <laughs> so um, if you would like to purchase them, they are for sale for $10 a pot. Uh, two dollars of which will go to student scholarship and so if you would like to purchase them please see us on the way out the door otherwise please leave them <laughs> thank you Suzanne well this was like the uh of the Titans here because I have my family and friends here and they don't see the Toman <laughs> To them, I am a quiet and peaceful Lithuanian. <laughs> and so it really, I was dreading this night. No, I was truly because, you know, my students might talk or my sister might talk. You know, or my aunt. And so I'm just saying it's a very happy blend, and I am so truly honored to be here with Mary and Joe and all the others from the past who have been inducted into the Ring of Honor. And it truly is like a dream. I mean, I think there's so many worthy and deserving people, and um, I'm just very, very deeply honored and touched. Um, I think, just to give you a little background on me, um, I have always wanted to be a teacher. From the time I was a small child, I remember holding summer school during camping trips with all the little kids in the campgrounds. <laughs> yes, and my favorite dolls, Chatty Kathy and Susie Smart, yes. <laughs> and um, it just has truly been a wonderful journey um, to get here to this point at Bishop Guilfoyle. But I do have a confession to make that I think only my sister knows, and I am going to reveal it to all here that none of you actually know this about me. I am a kindergarten dropout. <laughs> so I think, I don't know if this is God's punishment that I be a teacher, or I just said along the way, I see the things that my teachers in the past have done, and there are many things that I wanted to emulate also. And I am sometimes difficult on my students. 
but you will thank me when you get to college and when you become professionals and make big donations to Bishop Gilfoyle. <laughs> <laughs> but my time here at Bishop Gilfoyle started actually with Monsignor Major. It was his very last day as principal here at Bishop Gilfoyle, and he desperately needed a math teacher. So I was very fortunate to know the superintendent of schools at the time, the late sister of Virginia Virgie, and um, she recommended me. So I truly don't even think I filled out an application. He was just happy to have a math teacher, and he was on his way to vacation, and that was it. <laughs> so there's a little side story to that that I did not find out about until several years later. And Jerry Cooper, where are you? Now, Mr. Cooper is one of the kindest people that I have ever met. And he did not tell me until several years later that Monsignor Major had actually promised him the algebra classes that I got. <laughs> because he was teaching geometry and he just wanted to get out of it. And at the time, I was on a leave of absence from a religious community. And so Monsignor Major told him that there was some little old nun who couldn't drive and who couldn't teach geometry who was taking that position. So I got the algebra and he got stuck with the geometry. <laughs> Thank you for being such a, for such a gentleman about it. It was really wonderful. Um, and immediately, Mrs. Siddler took me under wing and just helped me with adjusting. And it's always been a very warm and friendly place to be, truly, because there are so many of you wonderful people who are here with whom I've had the privilege to work with over the years. Um, as for being here at this moment, I think it's because of my involvement with student council, and that I blame Father Leo on. <laughs> because Father Leo, you're the one who talked me into this, I do believe. And um, so I am here because of Father Leo and Cindy Sharbaugh and Mary Wiley and Becky Bimel, June Kirsch, Marianne Everhart. You are the ones who made Student Council such a wonderful thing that it is and helped me to do my job so well. So I am truly, truly grateful to all of you. And then there are the students who make this such a wonderful job to have. We have our moments, definitely. And I am, I have earned the name Tominator. I mean, for just cause, you know, good reason. But, I, but look at these faces. I mean, how could you not be grateful to have such a job where you can work with such wonderful young men and women? And, teenagers with all that goes with being a teenager. <laughs> so and I'm truly grateful to you parents for taking them home at the end of the day. <laughs> and I do have also um, Mr. Kubitsa to thank, um, even though he's he can't be here tonight. I really was thinking about retiring from student council. I think I put in 13 years now with it. And it's a full-time job, isn't it, Mrs. Sharbaugh? Yes, Mrs. Everhart? It is. It's a lot of work. And I really thought that maybe I'm getting old and I need to retire from it. And then along came this ring of honor. So now I can't gracefully back out. I have to stay out a little bit longer. So I truly do just want to thank all of you for all of the wonderful things that you have done, my students, for the wonderful lessons that I have learned from you, such as um, never say, how are you making out back there? <laughs> In terms of dating, I just found this recently. I was corrected. You don't say, are you going with someone? Because that hasn't been occurred since their grandparents' day. I, was just, I think that was Sarah Shinuti who said that. And that, um, I think what hurts the most is that 80s music is now the oldest music. So I know I'm looking at some faces that are as wrinkled as mine, and you're saying, really? Yes, but it is. Can we have an oldie stance? We'd like to hear music from the 80s and 90s. Yes. So they have helped me to become very, um, you know, compassionate and um, full of humor in my life. They've added a great deal to my life that way. So it has been a tremendous, tremendous pleasure to be here at Bishop Gilfoyle. And I truly a very special thank you to those of you who nominated me. Again, a great honor. Um, I do want to thank, um, you know, my parents, the late Frank and Patricia Toma, for encouraging me to um, follow my, my dreams of becoming a teacher. But uh, they really did encourage me along the way and support me in everything I did. And I'm grateful to my sister Patty and my Aunt Joyce for making the trip here. And um, for all of my family members, you know, who could not be here. But also the Zangrilli and Provenzano families who took me in as their own, even though I am that quiet, peaceful Lithuanian. And anyone who knows Italians knows that they are not a quiet and peaceful people, are they? <laughs> quite a shock, quite a shock, yes. And 
my absolutely wonderful co-workers, both faculty and staff who are here. You just are so wonderful to teach with, and I'm just so <coughs> privileged to teach with you and honored, and especially Stuart Crocker, who makes the rest of us look so good. <laughs> Um, the Board of Trustees and past and present administrators who have supported me and all the crazy things that sometimes the kids say, could we do this? And then I go to them and say, could we do this? And they say, okay, all right, we can do it, so we do it. But especially to the parents who have entrusted me with their children, thank you. I hope I haven't scarred them too much, but again, it will pay off in the long run. They will do well, hopefully, in the future. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, my wonderful students, for all that you have been and all that you are. And I think, um, just in closing, um, I just wanted to share a quote from Herman Melville, which kind of summoned, uh, sums up what we teachers are about. Um, and before I say this, I, I want to make sure that I haven't done a Jerry Milliron and forgotten anybody. So, oh, sorry, Jerry, where are you? <laughs> so thank you. I, I apologize if I forgot anybody. But anyway, just to quote um, Melville, we cannot live our lives alone. Our lives are connected by a thousand invisible threads. And along these sympathetic fibers, our actions run as causes and return to us as results. So thank you very much. Jana, Jana. Thanks for enlightening me. Uh, I'll have to say about two or three years ago, and I can't remember how long it was, I was getting ready for practice. Jess was probably in the gym. And I was out near the water fountain, and I never knew that she was called the Tominator. But she started on somebody, and I ran into the gym. Because I had these flashbacks back to 1972. And I never knew this, so now I can understand after three years ago, she scared me. <laughs> Class of 72, it was, Mary, you, you brought it up, and I, I see Frank here, and Dave, Chris, uh, Martin over here, and I see Mike and Cindy in the back, a lot of members, my wife, uh, Class of 72, and I think, of, think about this one, so. If you take a look and you start reading Purple and Gold, doctor, uh, psychiatrist, uh, engineer, uh, all the successful people that came out, and the, the class of 72, I am so glad that, that you all attended my after class mentor system. <laughs> and I was able to be such a big impact on, on your academics here at Bishop Gilford. And I think of Joe Keller, I'm going to say this because uh, I think of community and I think of caring. Honestly, they're the two words that, that I think of. And I even told my son one time when we were talking and Joe's name came up, uh, they may have been the words that, the, that I talked about. And then I had an opportunity to meet his associates um, at Keller Engineers. And I'll tell you what, they're like Joe. I mean, it's just incredible what his his people are like. It's incredible what Joe's like. I'm proud of, of our class of 72 and, and what Mary uh, had to say. And, and, and also, you were probably, what, before 72, Ms. Toma? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see what a Tominator really looked like. <laughs> but Joe is just a remarkable guy. Uh, he's a, if, if you never had an opportunity to, to meet him before you leave tonight, go up, shake his hand. Um, he has not only been such a strong influence on the BG community, but if you would ever see what Keller Engineers does to the Blair County, and, and I don't know, Joe, I apologize if it's not the surrounding Blair County, or I know at least Blair County and all the things that, that, that his firm has done to support this community. It makes me proud to, to, to know uh, uh, and be associated uh, with Joe. Um, we had to bring in uh, Judge Tim Sullivan tonight because he's actually going to be a judge tonight 
on judging Dan Miller and on how much he does, and they both have to report to Rich Consiglio. So can you imagine what this chain of command is going to be? And uh, Dan, I know that uh, that you were a couple years later, um, but it gives me uh, if you could please come up and present such a great man, Joe Cullen. How does the owner of a very successful engineering firm find time to help with a high school phonathon? Ask Joe Keller. He will tell you because it is important and BG needs my help. Joe Keller has been helping his alma mater for decades, not only through his financial support to the school, but by sharing his time and talents. A 1972 graduate of Bishop Guilfoyle, Joe walks the walk when it comes to giving back to the place that helped him prepare for a productive and rewarding life. Over the past four decades, this modest and unassuming gentleman has helped BG when asked and most often when not asked. Currently, he is a member of the Founders Club and serves on the Development Advisory Board, chairing the grant writing efforts at the school. His company, Keller Engineers, has continually participated in the Education Improvement Tax Credit Program, which provides much needed tuition assistance to current BG students. You will find him sponsoring tables at events like Touched by an Angel, and in the stands at BG sporting events showing his support for student athletes and enjoying every minute of it. Perhaps his greatest legacy is the Challenge Program, which is designed